It's time for more Star Rail drinks. We are doing character drinks. The March 7th, the Himiko. Adventuring. This is the Gallagher. Finally something in one of these videos goes right. Woo! I'm not gonna lie to you, that's just really delicious. Oh, oh, oh. I put this up there as one of the best things I've actually made. I'm losing it already. Honestly, that just makes it taste all the better. I'm sorry, but I just kind of nailed it. My friends, indulge yourselves. It is 5.45 on a Tuesday night. I'm wearing a ridiculous outfit. That can only mean one thing. It's time for more Star Rail drinks. That's right, you have asked for it, and I am here and happy to provide. Now, we should probably address the elephant in the room. Why isn't he dressed like Gallagher? First of all, calm down. Secondly, I have some good news and some bad news. Good news for my liver, I'm not doing this all in one day. Bad news for you, I'm not doing this one all in one day. If you watched the last video, you may recall me saying to expect a lot of bourbon in the next one. And yeah, this one has a lot of bourbon. Three out of the four drinks to be exact. I'm not gonna apologize. But if you remember, I also said that all of the drinks in the next one would be good. And I didn't lie there. They are all going to be tasty. So hey, that's good news. But I didn't actually address this. Uh, it, it's Kalis. That's the bit. It's as close to Kalis as I could get, or Stell if you want. But that also means you shouldn't get weird in the comments this time because I do have the bat. And interesting fact, this is actually a custom Louisville Slugger with <laughs> my channel's name and link on it. Uh, so if you don't want to get hit by the content creator bat, be chill for once. All right, what's the plan though? Well, you all asked for it and I'm more than happy to oblige. I think I've already said that in this video. We are doing character drinks. That's right, cocktails based on characters from the game. I think they're really good, as I said earlier. But also, as I said, there's quite a bit of bourbon in this video. Bourbon's pretty strong already, and so are these drinks. So I'm doing everyone a favor here by not doing all four in one. So why the Kalis outfit for the first two? Oh, it's because it's two members of the Astral Express. And don't worry, the second half, I'll be in the Gallagher outfit because we're doing two Pentaconi characters, so it'll make sense then. This one just makes sense now. But before we get into that, I would like to remind you to always drink responsibly, drink lots of water. This has a straw that didn't even work. Now my mustache is wet. Drink in moderation, drink safely, do not drive, all of the things. Drink responsibly. I know it is funny to watch me get drunk, but I am being safe and responsible whenever I'm doing these, and so should you. So without further ado, let's get into the Himiko. There are a few things that come to mind when I think of Himiko, and I think in terms of drinks and Himiko, everyone would agree that the most obvious choice is coffee. It's kind of a big thing, is that she brews all these nice coffees. So when you think of coffee and alcohol, a few things come to mind. First, in my head, was an espresso martini, but we've already done that, and I didn't want to reuse ideas yet. And then there's an Irish coffee, which is Irish whiskey, and so I was thinking of, like, kind of combining those, so I thought of bourbon cream. Cream in coffee, that makes sense. If we're doing bourbon cream and an Irish coffee kind of thing, then you, you might as well just do bourbon at that point, because it's a type of whiskey. And no, I've changed my mind, hold on. As much as I adore my angel's envy, Himeko is a Japanese name. So why not bust back out the Japanese whiskey? Go some Nika Coffee Grain Whiskey. As we discussed in the first cocktail video I did, it is sweeter like bourbon. It's a little orangey, a little citrusy, which I really like. And I think it'll kind of go well with the darker flavor of the coffee. Plus coffee and coffee, co coffee. I still don't know how to pronounce that. It's funny, it's the point. So technically now only two of the drinks have bourbon in it. <laughs> All right, let's get to making it, I guess. I'm not gonna do too much ice. I mainly just want this to seal. I want that to close and not have the coffee go everywhere again. Let's start with two ounces of our Nika Coffee Grain Whiskey. Okay, maybe a little more than two ounces. Ooh, that's good. Now, why this one over other Japanese whiskeys? You might be able to see back there, I have the Suntory World. Oh, and I'm now thinking, 
No, okay. It would be funny to use that because trailblazing and world, that's pretty funny. But a lot of Japanese whiskeys kind of have this heavy peatiness to them. The world especially has this massive peatiness to it. And I don't want that. I don't think that'll go well with the coffee. That's why we're doing this, because it's sweeter, it's like bourbon already. And like I said, I think the orangey flavor will work very well with this. Yes, he's back, Mr. Black himself. We're gonna do one ounce of Mr. Black coffee liqueur. Little sip again. Oh, if coffee tasted like that, I would drink it all the time. It's so rich and smooth. Again, it's kind of chocolatey. It's, it's a lot richer than coffee, in my opinion. It's a lot thicker and creamier in texture too. So as I said in the other video, I don't drink coffee. So that other Starbucks one did go to waste. It expired and I poured it all out. So now we are on to this Stoke Cold Brew Coffee. Uh, it is still an espresso mix, but it is still black. So I don't know how well we'll get this one to froth up, but I did buy milk and cream just in case. If the bourbon cream doesn't do it, the milk and cream should. There's no like little tap thing to get this off. That's, this might be the best coffee in the world, but that's annoying. Do you smell like a new boot? A little bit. No, it smells. Okay, it's a little booty, but kind of like popcorn at the same time. Kind of like an unbuttered popcorn. What do you taste like? Still a void, still emptiness and sadness. No, there's not really sadness there. It's just emptiness. It's like stanky water. It's just water, but with like this hint of the idea of coffee. I guess this is what people who like espresso like. I, I don't know. That has like next to no flavor to me. Honestly, that's fine. That just means we're getting the cafe. The cafe, coffee, cafe. I'm losing it already. We're gonna get the coffee flavor mostly from the Mr. Black, which I like significantly more. So one ounce of our Stoke Cold Brew Espresso. Shockingly, this is the first thing we've actually gotten on the counter. So we're doing well so far. And last but not least, we are going to do this Buffalo Trace Bourbon Cream. It is only 15%, wow. It smells kind of like cinnamon milk. That's not bad. When I bought it, the woman at the store said to put this in like any soda and it kind of just turns it into a float. I haven't tried it yet, but that sounds pretty good to me. We're gonna do just half an ounce of this bourbon cream. Oh, that looks so cool in there. We're gonna hope this foams up. It's time to shake. Ooh, foamed up a good bit. It's not very white foam, but that's fine. Oh, this glass is not big enough. All right, hold on. Whoa, we gotta retry this, hold on. That was seamless. We're gonna do, let's just say a splash of milk and cream. That might've been a little more than a splash, but hey, whatever. As long as it foams up. Ooh, that feels like it's getting nice and foamy. And now it's on my floor. Second time's the charm. Tastes better. Give me foam. Oh, there's a foam head, yes! Finally, something in one of these videos goes right. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I only had to drink like half of the beverage to get to it, but we have a foam head. Woo! All right, now that we have a foam head, we can finally do the final part. Himiko is a fire character, so we're gonna sprinkle some cinnamon on top as a little garnish and decoration. That might be too much cinnamon, but I, I, at this point, I don't care. We did it, it's on the drink, it looks nice, sort of, it doesn't look great. I am boiling alive. I had to turn the AC off again. So hot in here right now, and I'm wearing a jacket. But there we have our Himiko. I'm not gonna lie to you, that's just really delicious. Oh, after the last video, I needed this so bad. That is so tasty. That is so, so tasty. The cinnamon is adding so much to it. It's breakfast. That's exactly what this says to me. You've had a bowl of cinnamon toast crunch and you've been drinking coffee and all of that is just mixing in your mouth in the most beautiful way. Oh, I suppose we should come up with a secondary name. We'll call it 
the Trailblazers breakfast. Because that's exactly what that tastes like. If you are not a bourbon person or a whiskey person, you won't mind this one bit. You taste none of it, if I'm being honest. It's all the coffee and it's all the, the cream and milk and the bourbon cream. Oh, I forgot to delete the files again. I wish I had a more nuanced description for you, but I really kind of just nailed it on the head there. I feel like I'm at a hotel. Like I'm visiting a hotel and they have those little packages of cereal. I grabbed the cinnamon toast crunch one, put the milk in it, grabbed a cup of coffee, put a little creamer in it. And then this is what's left in my mouth afterwards. The cinnamon and cream and milk are making the sweetness that is just being delivered by the bitterness of the, the Mr. Black. It's gonna amp me up with the espresso. That's kind of, I guess, the benefit of the espresso in this is that, like I said, it kind of just is a void with that hint of bitterness. So really it was able to take on all these other flavors and let them play first fiddle to the rest of the drink. I love cinnamon so much that that was an incredible decision. It's providing this nice little touch of heat. That is so pleasant. I hate coffee. This is an established thing. I could drink this every night. I said this in the Hollow Advent video, that espresso martini I thought was good, but was not for me. This is for me. Unless you don't like cinnamon and picking up the bowl of milk after eating some cinnamon toast crunch and just slamming it down. Oh, I don't imagine how anyone could not like this. If you don't like whiskey or bourbon, I like, I don't taste it. If you don't like coffee, I hate coffee. There's not enough in here to make it unpleasant. And you feel that it is necessary. You taste it and you know that it's important that it's there. If you had done this without it, I don't think this would work. I think it would be too much. It would be too sweet. But with that coffee there to hold everything up, like the hot air in a hot air balloon. Yes, the rest of it is the beautiful design, but that coffee is really doing literally all the heavy lifting. I'm, I'm almost done with it. I might finish this on camera. I put this up there as one of the best things I've actually made. Just like Himiko, this has a firm place in my heart. And honestly, could you not see her drinking exactly this out of a martini glass? I think I nailed this one. I'm sorry to toot my own horn, but I think I nailed this one. Next up, I don't want to spoil it for you, now do I? Oh, that's so good. And we're back. I briefly turned the AC all the way down to 66. So hopefully we have a brief window before I start melting again. So I made the joke about not spoiling the next one when this segment was immediately after, but hey, this is the March 7th. And because I am never want for terrible ideas, I decided to experiment with it as of two minutes ago. This is a recipe I knew worked. I know that it tastes good. And my stupid ass decided, what if we did this instead? We're gonna see how this goes. What's one of these videos without a little experimentation and failure, am I right? Now this is an experiment I just don't think will work, but I think it'll look cool if we can make it work. Where's my knife? So we are going to garnish this with an orange wedge. Well, more like an orange wheel. So we're gonna try a little something. If you watched the admittedly disastrous last video, then you will remember how to salt a margarita glass. We're gonna see if that works with orange juice. For our March 7th, I kinda wanna see if we can get some cotton candy. Oh, it's working a little bit, hold on. We didn't really need the orange juice, I think that's actually making it harder. So there we go, to start our March 7th, a little cotton candy ring. It fits her, that makes sense. Now, for March 7th, obviously it's gotta be pinkish. It's gotta be a bit sweet. I think that makes sense to everyone. And to achieve that, we're going to be using, yeah, I know, I keep using it. But to be fair, this recipe existed well before any of the other Star Rail ones. So I don't feel bad about using the Butterfly Pea Blossom Gin again, okay? Naturally, we're gonna start with two ounces of the Butterfly Pea Blossom Gin. And now we're going to do three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. And now originally, and if you want to play it safe, we did three quarters of an ounce of orange simple syrup. That's what we decided to go with. But upon pulling out the gin, I remembered that I did buy Cointreau. And Cointreau lime juice, I mean, this is kind of like a gin margarita at this point. So I figured, why not try it? 
this gin is citrusy already. It should be fine. So we're gonna go with, ooh. We're gonna say three quarters of an ounce of Cointreau. And now is the tough part. A margarita would use agave nectar, but I'm worried that's gonna change the color too much, and I don't want to. Instead, we're gonna use some plain simple syrup. We're gonna go for quarter of an ounce. Let's see what that tastes like. Let's check that real quick. Oh, it's very sour. Let's do another quarter of an ounce. Bump that up to half an ounce of simple. That's still a little sour, but that's that's better. That's a lot better. We want it to be sweet. Three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. Like I said, just do three quarters of an ounce of orange simple syrup and you'll be fine, but... Oh, yeah, that's it. We add ice. And shake. So we're not really gonna bother straining because this was gonna have ice in it anyway. That's looking like the right color. That's a nice fun pink, right? But that's not the end of it. Because as margarita-esque as we've made it, the original idea was kind of more of a gin and tonic. I don't have any more tonic. Tonic's apparently terrible for you. So we're just gonna add soda water and that'll be just fine. Boom. Now we re-garnish with our orange peel and a cherry. That's a big cherry. And there you have a March 7th. Oh, that cherry's gone. That went straight in. I'll have to dig that back out. Oh, wow. That's delicious. I don't think it really needs an alternate name because March 7th is a pretty innocuous name to begin with. Let's get that cherry back out of there. Mm -mm -mm. I love me a good cherry. Let's talk about what it tastes like. Without the cotton candy rim, it's sweet without being overpoweringly so. The club soda really cut down a lot of that. Mix it up a little even. Oh, that has a lot more kick to it now. It's very, very citrusy. Let's get the cotton candy ring going. Yeah, ooh. When I actually got cotton candy, a lot of that cotton candy flavor and smokiness. The drink itself is just a little sweet. Tastes like a lighter margarita. You don't have all that tequila strength and stank in there. Instead, it's the gin kind of referencing the lime juice and the Cointreau and the orange. Speaking of, let's squeeze that in there. Oh, that's very good. I like the orange. The orange was a good idea. I wouldn't call it as much of a home run success as I would the Himeko. I think it is perfectly pleasant. It is perfectly enjoyable. On a summer day, this would be perfect. It's a nice cold, get it? Because she's a nice character. A refreshing drink. That's the best way to describe it, is it's a very refreshing drink. This is what you want at the poolside or on the patio of a restaurant in the summer. It's not sickeningly sugary sweet. It's just that little taste of sweet. If you stuck a bunch more sugar in there, it might be a little closer to her personality, but I think you would get really sick of it very fast. If you remember my reaction to tasting it with the spoon, that strength is gone. That visceral power of the sourness. The club soda, there wasn't even a ton in here, but it really did cut a lot of that out. So you're just kind of, whoa, there's a bit of orange in there. That was nice. This is unlocking new secrets with every sip. It's like a lighter orange juice. It's like if orange juice had a lemonade. That's the way to describe it. If, if there was an orange version of lemonade or limeade, either one, where it's not overpoweringly that fruit's flavor, it, it's that fruit's flavor kind of watered down and made to be more appealing and relaxing. The lime juice is adding the sourness. It's closer to a limeade in flavor than it is a lemonade, but the actual flavor is orange. So it's an orange limeade, is basically what we've made here. And it's, I, I can't complain. I'm very happy with that. I feel like this one is so much shorter than all the other ones, but I've really kind of said everything I, I need to say about that. It's like an orange version of a limeade. It's refreshing, it's nice, it's cold. It's March 7th. Hey there, I forgot to film a mid-roll bit, so I'm here in this Genshin Impact ice wizard blanket thing. I just want to say thank you so much for watching, I really hope you're enjoying it. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and do all the YouTube things. It really, really helps out the channel. 
If you want to and can, please become a member. You get access to all sorts of cool stuff through that. I'm gonna keep this one short because this video is already long enough. So, back to the past. Yeah, yeah, I said that I dress as Gallagher for the Pat and Coney bit, but before you get complacent, I still have the bat. And if you are wondering, well, why isn't he in the full cosplay? Well, the last video still isn't at 10,000 likes at the time of recording, and that goal is gonna stand for that video. So go watch that one and like it. 10,000 likes on this one, and I don't know, I'll be happy. <laughs> I digress, however. It's time to make some drinks. I mean, we gotta save Gallagher for last, right? That's gotta be the finale. Especially because this first one is not really an original idea. Now, as a lot of you must know, because you certainly let me know in the comments of my posts and videos, Hoyo Fair hosted the Sparkle Jazz Nights event. It was really good. The music was fantastic, I won't even lie. Except for that part where Gallagher pours tonic water out of a shaker. What were you doing shaking tonic water? It's carbonated. But regardless, for the event, they actually made several cocktail recipes, and a lot of you asked me to make them. Some of them are pretty reasonable and easy to make. Some of them, admittedly, not too much. But one that I can do is for my boy who I did finally get, Aventurine. I actually made this drink on stream one night. We made a few of the sparkle drinks. It was really good, I'm not gonna lie to you. And so I'm very excited to make it again. But that's not the only upside to it. If you remember in that last video, I mentioned how I found a certain bourbon nearby that happened to fit the theming of Aventurine perfectly. Look at that, just aesthetically, it is on point. On top of the fact it's called Lucky Seven, and it actually comes with uh, quite an Aventurine style story. See, this specific bottle typically goes for $130 to $150, depending on where you're getting it. But the store where I got it had it on the shelf, and underneath it was the tag, Lucky 7, 6 year, for $106. I was like, oh, that's kind of a steal if that's true. So I grab the bottle, I take it up, he scans it, and he says, $147. And I'm taking it back for a second, I go, oh, sorry, the, the tag said a 106 he says, really? Take me to it. So I take him, he looks at it. Sure enough, he sees the 106, takes the tag down, even looks in like the locked case, clearly showing this was expensive enough. It was not supposed to just be on a shelf. He brings it back to the counter, asks his other woman who's working there, who texts their manager. The manager calls and says, yeah, that's not supposed to be on the shelf. Somebody made a mistake. Go ahead and give it to the guy for 106 and I'll fix it tomorrow. So I got this bad boy for like $48 off. And honestly, that just makes it taste all the better. Now the drink that they made for Aventurine is called the Risky Sour. It's clearly a take on a whiskey sour, except the big difference is that they use a popcorn syrup. You can probably see this says kettle corn. Uh, popcorn syrup you can find pretty easily on like Amazon. I just didn't want to wait for it to ship the night that I was streaming, so I went and I bought kettle corn. This works just as well. It tastes very, very, very good. I don't think anybody's gonna complain. And now this next point might be a little pedantic, but the reason I'm going for bourbon specifically is because in the recipes that they published on the website and in the little recipe book that they released, which is A, very cute, but B, technically has this recipe wrong. It tells you to do like an ounce of the kettle corn syrup and less than half an ounce of the bourbon and whiskey. They mix some stuff up. But in all of their recipes, the way they specifically spell whiskey is with an E. And this isn't a hard and fast rule, but generally speaking, whiskey without an E is Scotch, Canadian, and Japanese. Whiskey with an E is Irish or American. For example, the Nika and the Toki both don't use an E, while Buffalo Trace and this Lucky 7 do. But again, it's not a hard and fast rule. Old Forester doesn't. Maker's Mark doesn't. Again, it's pedantic. But when I saw whiskey with an E, I was like, okay, we're gonna do American. Might as well do bourbon, because I have an excuse. <laughs> the recipe itself is fairly simple. It's a whiskey sour, which means we're gonna add some ice, and then 
I want to talk about this bourbon for a second, actually, because this is good shit. You can use whatever bourbon or whiskey you want. I don't think it's going to affect this drink too much. I paid a lot of money for this bourbon, so I want to talk about it. Ooh, it's got a heavy alcohol smell. It's strong. This is a strong, strong bourbon. Mmm. <laughs> oh, so in the mouth, it's kind of trail mixy. It's nutty. It's that flavor of just grabbing a handful of trail mix and throwing it all in. We talked about this. It's when you swallow <laughs> that the real fun starts. Phrasing on that was uh, rough, but I digress. Now, when I read reviews before I went and got, I was gonna get a cheaper one, actually. I was gonna get their five year. I was just having a shitty night, so I decided to bump up to the six year because when I read the reviews, the description was that the finish was long and violent. That was like a universal statement. And they are not lying. When you take a good sip of this and you swallow, I, I cannot stress enough that I mean this as a compliment. It is extremely pleasant to me. It's like taking a sip of fruit punch and then chomping down on the lit end of a cigar. It burns so beautifully and so powerfully. There's so little actual burn when it's in your mouth, which is a, a bit rarer, I think. A lot of unbourbon and whiskey will burn the whole time. This one, there's not really a hint of that burn until you swallow, and then it's like someone took a lighter to the inside of your mouth. Everything just ignites. Oh, it's so good. And it has that deep, rich kind of cigar humidor flavor. It's these fruity, notes at the end and oh, oh, oh. I'm very happy that I paid the money for this. I don't think necessarily you should to make this one drink that's kind of ridiculous. Use whatever whiskey or bourbon you want. But if you are a bourbon aficionado, this is a really fun one to try and get your hands on. All of that to say, we're gonna add, now the recipe calls for 40 milliliters of bourbon. That's approximately an ounce and a half. I'm gonna just go ahead and bump it up to two ounces. That's what I did the other night. I really liked it. So we're gonna do two ounces of our Lucky Seven, the proprietor. Next, the recipe calls for 10 ounces. 10 ounces, <laughs> Ooh, that's a very different drink. It calls for 10 milliliters of lemon juice. Half an ounce is 15. And since we already bumped this to two, I'm just gonna call that half an ounce. And the same rule is going to go for our popcorn syrup here. We're going to bump that from 10 milliliters to 15. I'm going to give this a little shake. Now we're going to strain this into our rocks glass. Ooh, already smelling good. Personally, I found that adding a lemon peel, expressing a little lemon peel over that. You know what? Let's even use this other little shard I had. Throwing that in there really kind of gives it the body that it deserves. Otherwise it felt, it was good, but it tasted a little shallow. That lemon peel gives it a roundness that I am very excited to try. Again. Wow. Wow. Oh, I love that drink. Oh, oh I need to get this shot first. Hold on. Oh, I just want to get back to it. That is almost indescribably good. <laughs> um, Bourbon is made with corn. That was part of the other reason why I chose to do that is it's made with corn. We're using popcorn syrup. So it just kind of made sense in my brain. And boy, do those work perfectly together. I mean, it kind of tastes like you're drinking popcorn. Acidity of the lemon is there and you can feel it, but you're not so much tasting it as much as it's keeping the syrup and the bourbon from being too strong. It's keeping it a whiskey sour while the popcorn is giving you something wholly new in its flavor. This is unlike any whiskey sour you will ever have because it's not about tasting the lemon. It's not about tasting the bourbon. It's about both of those dancing around popcorn. This Lucky 7, whoa, oh, I got a little bit of it there. This is very strong. So feeling it a little in there is actually really nice. There's a brief note in there. It's the fruit punch part. Weirdly, I can sort of almost trick myself maybe into getting the other parts, but on that swallow, the kettle corn and the lemon juice have kind of removed that tobacco-y humidor thing I mentioned. 
and the burn entirely. And you're left with that fruit punch. Tastes like you're having a fruit punch with popcorn. Yeah, no, there it is. On those bigger sips, that fruit punch comes through when you swallow. That's amazing. Oh, they did an amazing job with this drink. The lemon is keeping it light and still feeling like a sour without the flavor being too sour so that the popcorn or kettle corn in our case, and in the case of the Lucky Seven, that fruity bit are just getting to express themselves in a beautiful way that is not overpowering like you would think. Cause this smells strong and I assume it tastes strong too. I'm not gonna drink straight syrup. The more I drink it, the stronger that fruit punch flavor at the end becomes, I swear. If you can't imagine it, it's kind of hard to express to you the idea I'm trying to get to of, you're not tasting lemon. There's not a lemon flavor, but there's the lemon feeling. There's the feeling of having lemon, having lemonade, having lemon juice and something. That acidity and that sourness is around everything. And it's kind of bizarre in a way, not unpleasant, most certainly, clearly, but it's hard to describe that sensation unless you know exactly what I am talking about. Just aces. Pollo Fair, you, you nailed this one. This one, out of the drinks I remember trying, easily my favorite. That's why it's in this video. If you can get your hands on the Lucky 7, again, this is the Lucky 7, the proprietor, this makes for an incredible risky sour, and it fits the theming pretty gosh darn well, doesn't it? That fruit punch flavor, it's almost almost an afterthought when you drink it on its own. Like I said, it's like you took a sip of fruit punch and then bit down on a cigar. So most of the flavor you get is that humidor surrounded by a burning flame and there's just the hint of fruit punch like kind of before and after and underneath. But all of that's gone and you're just left with pleasant fruitiness on top of popcorn. That's a phenomenal drink. It's almost honey-like. They, they have this kind of honey calm aesthetic that goes with the art. And I think that makes sense, honestly. It's, it's not honey flavored. I wouldn't say that, because I don't love honey. Long story. But it is honey-like in its flavor profile. The, the way it makes you feel, makes you feel like you're having honey. And I think that's, it's so nice. I'm once again drinking this way too fast to try and describe it to you. I'm gonna go take a break, maybe eat dinner, but when we come back, we're gonna do the Gallagher. Finally, it is time. It is the one you have all been waiting for. This is the Gallagher. The break ended up being way longer than I thought it was going to be. It took forever to actually get my food, <laughs> but I did use that time wisely as I am now officially in Penacone. I finished up the Sanjo Alliance, I had to ignore all the side quests, which hurt my soul, and I may only barely be standing in the lobby, but I am in Penacone, and that is what's important. Also, if you doubted my luck in any way, here's this clip. I would just like to confirm this. This is the same night that I am filming the video. During the break, uh, I decided to do a 10 pull. It's, I've probably only done like maybe two, maybe three since getting a venturing on this banner. And um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah maybe 20, 30 pulls at most between those two. So, Gallagher. Since Gallagher is literally me for real, for real, I can state with confidence that man drinks an old fashioned. Now probably he's actually just drinking whiskey or bourbon, neat or maybe on the rocks, but if he's getting a cocktail, he's getting an old fashioned. But then you think about him as a character, they say there's a lot of soda involved, his skill is a soda that is 100% non-alcoholic, so we will have a non-alcoholic version that I will put up the recipe for. And that got me thinking about Soul Glad. And that made me think, what if Soul Glad was like an old-fashioned flavored soda? And that seems like a really cool idea, to turn an old-fashioned into a soda. And so I made it, and it tasted very good, and I made it again, and it tasted very good, and so I am fairly confident that you will enjoy this recipe because I have multiple times. Since it's an old fashioned, 
instead of our normal ice, we're gonna do two rocks. Cause I think that's funny. So, as we should know from other videos, an old fashioned consists of bourbon, Angostura bitters, simple syrup, and an orange peel. That is the basics of the basics of an old fashioned. Since we're gonna be adding soda water to turn it into a soda, we're gonna need the flavors to punch through a lot more than usual. So I like to do three ounces of bourbon. Here I'm using this Old Forester Signature. It is their 100 proof bourbon. I like Old Forester for old fashions because it ends up being a lot sweeter, uh, especially with the bitters that we're gonna be putting in here. For me, that's my go-to. You can use any bourbon you want. I, I'm one of the people who tastes Old Forester and thinks of like bananas and fruity. So to me, thinking of a sweet syrupy soda, this just seems perfect. Next, we are going to throw in two dashes of Angostura bitters, kind of like two and a half, but whatever. For our simple syrup, you can do one of two things here. Now, the first few times I've made it, both alcoholic and non-alcoholic, I used agave nectar, half an ounce for alcoholic, a full ounce for non-alcoholic, but I had an idea the other day. What if we go all out on the soda and use a Coke syrup? I basically just took Mexican Coca-Cola. That's what we call it in America. It's Coke that's still made with cane sugar. You can get it pretty easily in America. Usually comes in glass bottles. It's not too hard to find. Then basically just poured a few bottles into a pot, boiled it down until it was a lot more syrupy. It could be a little more syrupy, but I'm not a chemist, so. With this, we are going to do a full ounce, however. I will give credit to the agave nectar. It does have a lot more of the soul glad coloring to it than this Coke does. This really darkens it up. Now I read or heard somewhere that soul glad is supposed to be very syrupy, either a lot of agave nectar or a lot of this Coke syrup, so that it's syrupy, but also that it's a little orangey. So I like to throw in one, two, three, four dashes of orange bitters. Up that to six, if you're not including the bourbon, up your Angostura to three or maybe four. Now bitters are technically alcoholic. This is 44.7% alcohol, but the amount that you get per dash is so negligible that it is still considered a non-alcoholic product. And if you put it into anything non-alcoholic, it is still considered non-alcoholic because the ABV is so low that it's basically negligible. Angostura used to sell a lemon, lime, and bitter soda, and it was still labeled non-alcoholic. You would get sick trying to drink straight bitters far before you ever got drunk. So throwing that into your non-alcoholic version is still gonna count. Much like an old fashioned, we're gonna try to stir this. This, this rock down here is not cooperating. There we go. And now the last step of our soul glad has gotta be a little bubbly. So we're just gonna top it off with soda water. Let's even mix it up a little bit. There we go. And of course, still an old fashioned. So we need this orange peel. And there we have our Soul Glad, AKA our Gallagher. Oh, that's still exactly as tasty as I remember it. Whoa, okay, maybe it was because the orange peel was right there, but there was a shot of orange right at the end. I mean, I'm sorry, but I just kind of nailed it. <laughs> that's so good. That tastes like what an old fashioned, if it was sold as a soda, would taste like. At first you're met with that old fashioned flavor that kind of gives way into that Coke syrup. Then when you swallow, you get the Angostura bitters that linger for a second, fade away, and when you think it's all over, the orange kicks in for a brief moment. But the soda water dilutes it technically, but does so in this really smooth way that just makes it so much easier to drink. If you serve this to someone who doesn't like bourbon, they'll probably still like this. Like I said, there's also a few different ways to make this, and obviously it's gonna taste different depending on how. For example, when you make it with the agave nectar, you obviously aren't gonna get that Coke cane sugar flavor that's coming in. But from what I remember, the rest of it's still there. If you're doing the non-alcoholic version, you don't have a lot of the bourbon roundness in the drink. It's a lot lighter as a beverage, but by upping the agave nectar and the bitters, you kind of make up for it in flavor. You really don't miss much, in my opinion. I thought it was just as good. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Right there, I did taste a lot of the bourbon. There was that 
old Forester bass note that was there for a strong moment when I let it linger. Oh, oh, it's an old fashioned soda. It's a, it's a soda that's an old fashioned. Oh, I am so happy that this idea worked more than any of the other ones. I am so happy that this idea worked. Cause the idea in my head of being able to go to a store and crack open a can of an old fashioned is so appealing. Cause when you get those canned cocktails, they're usually cut down so much. If you get a Jack and Coke can, the ABV is a lot lower than if you were to make a real Jack and Coke. And this tastes like the old fashioned equivalent of that, but in a way where you're not missing much. Like I feel like I am when I'm drinking one of those other canned or bottled cocktails. And realistically, with three ounces of bourbon, you're not missing much. This is a strong drink. This is probably the strongest thing we've made in the video, but damn if it isn't good. And it just drinks so easily. I drinks like I poured a Coke into a glass and I'm just enjoying it. That's crazy. This adds such a fun flavor. The cane sugar in this, if you want to bother buying a few bottles of Mexican Coke and, and boiling it down to get that syrup, this is well worth the effort, in my opinion, especially with how many you'll be able to make. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say that's what Soul Glad tastes like. That is my bold claim, is Soul Glad tastes like an old fashioned in a can or a bottle, technically. There you have it. I'm really happy with every recipe in this video. I think they're all very, very good. Did I come up with the Risky Sour? No, but you all wanted me to make those drinks, so I did, and I can confirm that one is very, very good. I think the Lucky Seven is fantastic in it. You can use any whiskey or bourbon you want, but that Lucky Seven went well. I would again recommend the Old Forester 100 proof in this. You're welcome to use whatever you want. I would recommend a sweeter one for the idea of this old lad being a sweet syrupy soda. But hey, why not enjoy yourself a nice cold glass of soul glad. And with that, I would like to thank you so much for watching again. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that you like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube things, share it with your friends and your family and your dog and your cat and maybe even your goldfish. Your goldfish will forget it pretty fast so you can show it to your goldfish many, many times. It'll love it every time. Honestly, if you are curious about any of the drinks in this video, they're worth your time to make. If you want me to make drinks based on more Star Rail characters, please let me know. I would be happy to do so. Let me know if you want to see Genshin's Endless Zone Zero, Third Impact, other games that exist. Go back and maybe do some VTubers again. I would be happy to do so. I really am enjoying this series, if you couldn't tell. If you want to and can, please become a member. You'll get early access to videos, stream VODs, exclusive videos. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please drink responsibly. Have a great night. And my friends, indulge yourselves.